Well, hello, and I want to thank you for joining us for our podcast number four on God, coffee, and COVID. And uh, I have Joel Hogan, uh, pastor of Community Baptist Church, and Don Grad, who is retired major with the Salvation Army. And I want to thank you guys for uh, coming on today. And the question that we want to talk about is, what good can come out of this? And even in saying that, I know that's a really dangerous question because there is so much that is not good. Uh, so many deaths, so much economic devastation, so much loneliness, so much social issues, uh, so much disruptions in the lives of families, people dying alone. Uh, I mean, it's, it's on the surface very hard to see anything good. And maybe that leads us into our very first question is, can anything quote unquote good come out of this? Is all of this kind of just terrible? And what gives us any basis for pulling any positives out of this? Well, uh, throughout scripture, we see time, time and time again, God brings something good out of something that's bad. Uh, one of my favorite stories, of course, is Joseph, where he, you know, gets thrown into the pit. They're going to kill him, and then they happen to see a caravan coming by. He ends up going off to Egypt, and and their evil act uh, later on turns into something in chapter fifty of Genesis, where he says, "Well, you meant it for good, but God was able to bring out some good. You meant it for evil, but God brought out some good." Uh, and some of it comes from the old Romans eight twenty eight. Uh, when I was a kid, we used to hear the King James version of that, which, by the way, isn't necessarily a terrible translation. Um, it's pretty accurate, but it's it's a little archaic in how it makes sense to us today in English. Not 1611 English, but 20, 2020 English. Uh, and we know that uh, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. The NIV changes it a little bit. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who have been called according to his purpose. Uh, and so what we see here is this idea that, you know, even in the midst of things that are bad, we can see God working out his purposes in the midst of those problems. We can see God achieving his purposes, even though there is something that we can't legitimately call bad or evil. Uh, and, and we can still say, wait a minute, there are some actually some good things that God is working out in those things. And, and then you take that and you go to James, where he says, consider it all joy when you encounter troubles and persecutions. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think there's definitely a thread throughout the Bible that we know that God can bring out good, especially in us, if we let him, uh, during times where bad things are happening. Most definitely. It, we, I think we see it probably in even in little things as, you know, uh, someone gets sick, but sometimes in the process of discovering the cause behind the sickness, something else is discovered, which then becomes good for the person's overall health. I know if I sometimes think about, uh, I guess anything in this is rooted for me in the sovereignty of God, um, that uh, even God can take things that happen that are not good on the surface but somehow can bring good out of them. Um, I know there was a statement in the past, I believe it was by Martin Luther that said, even the devil is God's devil. Um, and uh, that could sound really bad, but I think what he's meaning is, is even, even the devil's actions cannot override the sovereignty of God and what he can bring out of things. And I think of uh, the idea of just out of the ashes, uh, God's able to bring flowers, and uh, only God can do that. So, no, there's nothing good about the ashes, but uh, the flowers that can come out of them, uh, we can find something that is positive. Yeah, so, the, big, the uh, big theological sort of issue was this whole idea between natural evil, which people would say are you know things that no one actually, you can't put a finger on and say, oh, it's someone's fault. You can't say someone's free will was involved. Uh, natural evil versus sort of general evil where people do things and that causes problems for other people. Now, the vast majority of stuff that we experience in this world are pretty much, there's some 
purpose or person behind the evil. You could even point to this this virus and say, well, someone made a mistake with at the market or at the lab, and and we and you know it's a human caused issue. I mean, you can literally say that's it. But perhaps you think, oh, earthquakes, or you think tornadoes, those kinds of things. Wait a minute, you can't necessarily put a finger on pointing it at somebody. You know, so. The big theological debate is, okay, so is there natural evil? Is there things that God has allowed that we call evil? But, of course, when you look at the big picture, you begin to understand that if you don't have earthquakes, you don't have continents, then you can't have a place to live. And if you don't have hurricanes and tornadoes, you can't have the air mixing up and keeping our planet healthy. So, you know, there's that great big meta argument theologically. But then you get down to the picture, wait a minute, somebody did something bad and it caused some pain or this natural thing happened and it caused some pain. Can we look for good out of that? And again, I think the answer is yes. I know when my brother died, 1989, um, it, was a, it was a tragic car accident. And, and, you know, we saw some many, we saw many people, you know, come to Jesus or consider Jesus because of losing my brother. But I'm pretty sure if you talk to my mom and dad, they would rather have my brother back in a sense even though they recognize the good that came out of some of those stories and some of those aftershocks and after events, uh, they still would not say oh, it was a good thing that he went. And that, I think sometimes Christians fall into this little trap where they say, ah, that's evil, but I'm going to say it's good because of that verse in Romans 8, 28. And really, it's not saying that the event is good, but what can happen in us is good. Mm -hmm. Good thought. So let's, uh, let's take it a step further and talk about you know, uh, what does it take from us in terms of our responses to experience good? Uh, I think in uh, what we have shared so far, we're saying, you know, we can go through life and uh, we can be learners or we can be non-learners. Uh, you know, we can go through pain and not learn from it, or we can go through pain and learn from it. So what does it take from us to be able to gain something uh, out of the ashes, so to speak. Um, and what are some good things that you even witness uh, around you, in you, that uh, you see coming out of this? Well, I, I think one of the pieces that I've thought about and, and I've heard people talk about is it's kind of created a new perspective on many things. And I think of James uh, 4, uh, 13 to 15, where James says, you, you say you're going to go to such and such a city. I'm going to sell this much. I'm going to buy this much. I'm going to make a profit. And he says, you shouldn't just say that. You should say, if God wills, this mm -hmm. will, you know. Uh, now, making plans, of course, is good. But I've noticed a number of people who have said, like, they've had a new perspective. Like you were saying, uh, mm -hmm. I think someone was mentioning earlier that, uh, relationships and families and friends and so much has improved just because we've kind of had fewer options um, and um, and I, I think as I've watched TV at night both American and Canadian stations they almost always run a good news story about how somebody in ingenuity is making little uh, uh, mass brackets that out of his 3d printer and and he's distributing them. Or um, in Regina, a lady's teaching line dancing at 5 p.m. Uh, with her neighbors. Um, mm. It's uh, we're seeing a renewal of that sense of community, but I also think a sense of perspective. Um, mm. The you know we God has told us you know we think we're in charge, and I'm not saying God didn't create COVID. I mean it's it's a it's a result of the breakdown of the world because of sin, but but he's showing us, okay, I'm just helping you reset perspective. And, you know, going shopping at the mall every day is not what you need. And we're, you know, we're rediscovering relationships. I think it's exciting. So let's bring back the Sunday shopping debate, eh, guys? Remember that was <laughs> having that day off. Uh, now all of a sudden we had two months off. Okay, wait a minute. Yeah. We didn't necessarily like it. But, you know, there are some benefits of, of spending more time with, well, people have had to spend more time only with a certain small group of people, which has been a benefit to families. I think at the same time we have to be careful because there's been a lot of people who haven't been able to spend time with anybody because of, of either being single or not having connections. And that's been, that's been pretty sad and pretty hard on them. But, you know, there's still this thing, what can I do 
during this time that can be a benefit. I had a single lady that really hasn't been spending much time with many people. And all of a sudden she says, man, my prayer life has gone through the roof. All of a sudden the distractions are gone. So she was benefiting in that regard. So looking for those nuggets of, of goodness in the midst of stress or strife is, is very, very biblical. And I think I've heard many people say, you know, when we start to return to normal or whatever, a number of people have, I've, that I've talked to and have heard stories are saying, I hope I don't keep going in some of these new habits, mm -hmm. um, whether it's like the extra prayer or the whatever, um, you know, people are finding it's, they, they have reset in, in, in terms of some new good habits. That's great. Mm -hmm. I think uh, one of the interesting things is to even just watch the goodness that there is in so many people come to the forefront. Um, the support for frontline workers, the compassion. Uh, you see so many acts of kindness that become on display when we truly need each other. And mm -hmm. uh, I think we see, uh, we see the in a lot of goodness in people that really seems to come forward in times like this as well. Uh, let me uh, talk. You guys both are pastors or have been pastors. Uh, when you look at uh, the church, I mean, the church has been impacted dramatically. We, uh, we kind of thrived off of being together in community. Um, this has changed uh, dramatically for the church. What, what are some good things you see coming out uh, for the church? Ironically, I've seen a lot of people saying, man, I, I, I miss church. And, and I would say to them, well, you never came. <laughs> but, they, but we could if we wanted to yeah. it's like well, wait a minute so you reckon so by not having even the option people realize wait a minute i actually have been missing something so there's that i think is 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 you know you don't know what you got till it's gone and mm -hmm. a part of that's kicked into gear for sure yeah i know with online church i've been watching three or four church services on sunday and and really enjoying it and um, and i know a number of people when you look at the views of, you know, you produce an online church service. Um, my daughter has, and her husband are with the Salvation Army in Yorkton. Normally they have a congregation, 30, 35, whatever. But they're getting views of the church service they produce. And How many was that? 400. Okay. Wow. Um, and so like that's 12 times what they get on a Sunday morning. And they're hearing stories of friends and associates. Mm -hmm who are watching church who have never really gone to church and I think spiritually it, it could be a very good thing though I know lots of people are missing the actual handshake and the hug and such as we we get together in churches um, and, and that sort of thing I, I think one thing is is uh, many people in our society um, do not have a uh, religious memory they perhaps haven't been to church and so they don't know what things go on inside a church building. And uh, I think what this has done a lot of times in their impressions is that the church maybe is kind of archaic, archaic and irrelevant. And I know I have been very impressed, even within our community, how fast the church has been able to transition and continue to uh, function as a church. Um, and I think it's forced us, uh, forced us as a church to move into be more innovative. But I think it's also given an opportunity for people to get a window that maybe it's broken some stereotypes, uh, broken some impressions about what church is and what it's about. And I think in a good way. Uh, yes. Um, what about Sorry about that? People are trying to call the church. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking to them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, but you're absolutely right. And, and, and it's, and it's really given us that, you know, we've had to get creative in how we connect with people. Uh, but I think, you know, ultimately, you know, we, we recognize that the church is a body, the body has to be connected. So we've, we've got to be super creative in our connectivity and, and also, but the car, the body is going to have to still be incarnate. It's still going to have to be flesh and, and, and together. So, now, having the hope of, of meeting together again is a big deal, by the way. If we don't have that hope, I think we'd, we'd be in a bit, a bit of a bigger, bigger pickle. Yeah. 
So let's kind of bring it down even, uh, even more personally. If, uh, if we are going to find good, if we're going to come out of this better, say as individuals, uh, maybe our companies even, you know, we could think of this on many different levels, but if we are going to come out of this better, what are some perspectives? What are some things that we need to apply within our own lives uh, to ensure that happens? So we don't waste the pain, if I could put it that way. I, I've often referred to the, the statement, uh, God doesn't waste pain. We do, but God doesn't waste pain. Uh, how can we not waste the pain? Well, I think, I think even within my own condo where I live, um, through this, this time, um, we've all got to know each other better. Mm -hmm. You know, we've made more of an intentional effort to, whether it's talking to people from their balconies or whatever. Um, and um, we want, my wife and I, we want to continue to, to develop those relationships. Um, I, I know some people in the building know Jesus. I don't know about everybody and, and maybe in some small way in future conversations, which we were going to deliberately try to maintain, we'll be able to share something. And uh, so it's maintaining some of those things we're doing now, but just trying to remember to keep doing them forward. Yeah, and I also think that the initiative to sort of think, wait a minute, let's let's love each other. Let's love our neighbors. Let's do what we can to, to accommodate for them is, is a, is a picture that that we need to keep moving forward. Obviously, as things get adjusted and over time, you know, there's always these ways between goods and bad, the benefits, the 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 the, the risks, all that stuff. But nevertheless, I think the motivation there of saying, "Listen, I want to protect my neighbor," has been good, and I hopefully, and hopefully, that's something that we learn from this. Hmm. Yeah, I I would echo uh, what you guys are saying. I think there's this opportunity for us to look every day for how can we show kindness? How can we show love? How can we, uh, and I think rather than uh, getting self-absorbed, looking at, oh, you know, I feel lonely, or oh, this is terrible, or, you know, that kind of thing, to be able to lift our eyes and to look outward and uh, to see the people around and how can I make their day a little bit better, uh, I think is a, is a perspective that uh, is, something that I think makes us all better as a result. Mm -hmm. so. And one of the things I keep coming back to is, you know, when we look upon Jesus, there's hope. And the, um, and like even before COVID, people had lots of anxieties. And I'm hoping that as we've come out of COVID, that more and more people will say, like, there is hope beyond just today, our, our situations, and, and, and ultimately that there is hope in Jesus and that we can keep that focus because mm -hmm. even Christians have anxieties and we all know that. And, um, but the, one of the things I've been trying to keep maintaining is just looking unto Jesus. Like that's where hope is. And that's something we need to keep carrying forward. That is yeah. And our culture of course has moved toward putting their hope in things, material possessions and, and you know being able to be out and being having fun but all of a sudden wait a minute we've had to evaluate that so i think that's that's definitely something that will give people the ability to think through some of that now when perhaps the distractions never would have allowed them to do that yeah. well i think we could probably go on for quite a while in this whole <laughs> discussion and uh i think uh we could probably even go into society. What are some of the things that are reshaping uh, in our society? But maybe we can save that for another uh, another coffee. Um, Very good. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank you guys for uh, for your insights, for uh, speaking into and helping us navigate through uh, these difficult times. And I think all of us would join together in uh, in a prayer that uh, that even though this isn't good that God would be at work in us and through us to bring about good uh, in our Hallelujah. community and in our world. And so uh, may that be our prayer today. And uh, again, thank you for, for joining me. Thank You're you. Welcome.